Hey guys, see another finger here on YouTube. So initially this video was only going to be about war tension and hypothetically if Russia invades what might be the impact on China's decision on invading Taiwan. But just two days before I'm recording this, war has officially happened. So now things are feeling more surreal than it ever has been. I'm just as shocked and feel as terrible as everybody else is. I just really hope that everything could be resolved soon and this will all end before it takes more people's life. But I have been talking to this Ukrainian person who is currently in Ukraine in the comments and yesterday I asked them if there's anything us outsiders can do to help, like maybe a donation link that would help the current situation in Ukraine and they did send me this link which they wanted me to share with you which is a fundraiser from Ukraine called Come Back Alive. So this fundraiser they shared is actually quite well known already. If you google it, you'll find a lot of news media sharing their info as well. So the donation actually goes to supporting army equipment because a lot of people now would be joining army to protect the country without having much training and experience. So they need extra support. So when you go to their main page, as you can see, the language is in Ukrainian. On my computer, there's Google Translation. So as you can see, you can basically choose if you want to directly support the army or the organization itself. If you then click Country Build, the screen button, again, the page will be in Ukrainian. But when you scroll down, you'll see at the bottom right corner for you to change the language into English. So if you are interested, I'm going to leave the link in the pinned comments so it will be the first thing you see down below. Now, this channel is not monetized, so unfortunately, I cannot say something like all revenue from this video will be going to the fundraising because I don't receive anything in the first place, but I will still be donating. So if you would like to join, I believe that even just for a small amount would do some sort of help. So I'm making this video not only because I made a promise to share this fundraiser link to hopefully raise some awareness, but also, of course, in our position, it is quite worrying to see how China will react. So if you have been around the internet these two days, a lot of people are sharing this phrase called today Ukraine, tomorrow Taiwan. It's Ukraine today, Taiwan tomorrow. So watch out. And I asked you in a poll and 70% of you also believe that it would increase the chance of China invading. And of course, there are also a lot of you guys writing in the comments a lot of very, very persuasive reasons why China would not invade, which I will get into more details later in the video. But I think my biggest worry is quite accurately represented in this comment that says the possibility is slow but never 0%. So especially since the word outbreak, I really feel like this time Russia has proven that war is always a possibility. Like in the past month, most Ukrainians are always saying that they don't think war would actually happen and so are not too panicking about it. But war still happened, all of a sudden, just like that. It really has convinced me that no matter how small the chance is, it's still a chance. And that even the slightest chance would be enough of a reason to be worried and to take it seriously. So when it comes to my reaction to the current war situation, I've been watching a lot of footages of what is happening in a lot of cities in Ukraine right now. And specifically, a lot of these videos are about bombing, so there are explosions everywhere. And naturally, it is quite upsetting to watch. It is just so hard to imagine what these residents living around that area have to go through. And on the other hand, I also just can't stop but imagining that but happening in Taipei where I live. So I've heard that a lot of the bombings are targeting the military bases and literally I live right next to a military base. So if the same thing would be happening in Taipei, I would be the first one to experience it firsthand. So it's really scary. Now I'm not going to film myself reacting to this video on camera because I don't think it's necessary and also I don't want to force reaction just for the sake of the video. But suffice it to say, I did get quite emotional from time to time when watching watching these footages. You might think that I'm overreacting, and probably I am, because right now really nothing is happening in Taiwan just yet. But as I said, as long as the possibility is not zero, I don't feel 100% safe. And it's just hard for me to turn a blind eye on it and pretend that this doesn't concern me the slightest. Another point I would like to bring up is that I'm quite surprised to learn from your comments that actually a lot of other countries are also worried about being invaded following 
claimed by the invasion in Ukraine. Specifically, there's a comment from Lithuania saying that basically the whole Baltic area are now preparing for the possible invasion from Russia right after Ukraine. And there seems to also be worries coming from India that even way before China can invade Taiwan, they might already start invading part of India while the whole Western world is focusing on the Ukraine crisis. So I'm really sorry to hear that. Again, as I've already said, I really, really hope this whole invasion thing just will stop as soon as possible and that not any more countries will be involved. So I guess a huge part of why people are worrying about Taiwan right now and drawing parallels between Ukraine and Taiwan is that indeed there are a lot of similarities between the two situations and maybe from a Western perspective it seems more like a Western democracy versus these two huge nations that has its communist past and are to this day considered huge rivals to the Western world. I am personally also quite surprised at the similarities between the two situations because recently as I'm trying to learn more about the history between Russia and Ukraine, I am really surprised at how much I can relate to it because a lot of the things can actually ap also apply to the situation in Taiwan as well. For example, there seems to be a lot of cultural similarities and shared history between Russia and Ukraine and so is China and Taiwan. Or perhaps I should say the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China and a lot of the time it might be difficult for outsiders to tell which one is which. And there seems to be intervention coming from the US in both Ukraine and in Taiwan. So you see, United States always had interest in Ukraine. And likewise, Ukraine also extended its full support to United States. Similarly, the US has always seemed to be quite interested in Taiwan and the current status quo is probably kept this way intentionally by them as well. But one thing I specifically want to talk about is that both the leader of Russia and China seem to have this same idea of Ukraine and Taiwan being rightfully a part of them and that it should not be separated from them. I would like to reiterate that Ukraine is just not a, our neighboring country. It's an integral part of our own history, culture, and spiritual space. Ukraine, from the beginning and in its totality, has been created by Russia. Taiwan has always been an inseparable part of China's territory. So you constantly hear these narratives where the Russian leader would say that he sees Russian people and Ukrainian people as one people and the Chinese government would say something like they see Taiwanese people as their family and by saying so they're trying to justify their behavior but I don't buy that at all. That is just not the way you treat family and I just find it so ridiculous. So when people don't see the other group of people as their own kind there is war. So how is it that when people do see the other group of people as their own kind there should still be war? It makes no sense to me. To me I do believe in those Russian citizens when they say that they see Ukrainian people as their brothers because these are the Russian people who do not support war. They're saying that they don't want anyone to get hurt because they see them as their brothers. This is the way you should be treating your family. So in my opinion if you're making invasion, you're making threats, and you're hurting and killing so many people on the other side, you don't really see them as your family, no matter how much you want to convince other people that you do. Another thing that really surprised me to learn is that the political parties in Ukraine can also be categorized by whether it is more pro-Russia or pro-West. So basically, the politics of Ukraine is divided into three categories. Actually, the major ones are two, but there are political groups who are in between. So together there are three categories in which all the political parties in Ukraine, irrespective of their ideology, can be easily categorized. The first category includes those political parties who are pro-Western, they also support NATO, they are pro-European, they believe in the liberal democracy of the Western countries, and they are also anti-Russian. The second category includes all political parties that are pro-Russia, they like the old Soviet culture, they are Eurosceptic, meaning they criticize European Union, and they are often anti-American, and they are also not very liberal. The third category includes political parties that only focus on regional and local interest. Well, in Taiwan, there are basically just two main parties, one more pro-China and the other more pro-independence slash pro-US. So sometimes there's this misunderstanding that depending on which party gets selected in the president's election, it reflects how Taiwanese people think, whether they're more pro-China or pro-independence. But this is not always the case. To be honest, both parties now are quite 
quite corrupted and both of them are equally terrible so a lot of the time we're just voting which one is slightly less terrible so for example right now is it is the green party that is ruling taiwan so they are pro-independence and but now they have been doing a lot of things that really really disappoints a lot of taiwanese people which is why a lot of people are predicting that maybe the next time it is very likely that the blue party will be elected instead but it would not mean that all of a sudden Taiwanese people are more towards China and unification with China but as I said it really depends on other factors as well but anyway, it is exactly because Ukraine and Taiwan are both in such similar situations being threatened by nations coming with similar attitudes that a lot of people are suspecting that China might get this idea from Russia and eventually copy what Russia did. But there's actually a quite strong counter argument for this. So basically what they're saying is that if China does decide to invade, it kind of entails that they're publicly admitting that Taiwan is not a part of them. Furthermore, from the way China has recently responded to the questions about Taiwan directly addressed to them, it would seem like even though literally the entire world can tell just how similar the situation is in Ukraine and in Taiwan, China itself is the only one that does not think so. So to them, Taiwan is already a part of them without the need for any sort of invasion. So this also further confirms the previous arguments that they might not invade because they already see Taiwan. Taiwan as a part of them. Then again, a lot of people are also saying that China might be specifically looking at how the US and Western countries are reacting, basically how much supports they can provide in Ukraine, and they might use that to estimate how much supports Taiwan might get if they invade. And so basically, if the West failed Ukraine, then it might increase the chance of China invading, which actually makes a lot of sense because what I'm thinking is that technically they could still just invade anyway and then claim that it's a civil war. I'm not actually sure if that's how it works, but maybe that is a possibility. But actually, compared to the arguments supporting that China will be more likely to invade, there are actually way more arguments made disagreeing with this. First of all, Taiwan is an island, so it would be way more difficult for China to suddenly send in tons of troops to surround Taiwan like Russia did. Secondly, Russia has in the past already taken a part of Ukraine. Meanwhile, China hasn't really done anything similar yet. They haven't even made a move on the Jingmen Island yet, which is just so close to them, it's literally just right across the street. So if you look at the map, you might just assume that it's a part of China, but actually this island currently is under control of Taiwan. So it is also said that if China was really serious about this invasion, they would have made the move on this island first. Next, Taiwan does have its geographical importance and semiconductor industry that most part of the world might not want to lose, so it also increases their chance of intervention. Finally, if China choose to invade, it might have quite a negative impact on their economics, which they might want to avoid. So my reaction to this is that it actually makes a lot of sense because a huge part of why China is considered so strong and the reason why so many countries are doing whatever China is asking them to do and pleasing China is for the amount of money they have. So I guess it would make sense that China wouldn't really let go of this just in exchange for Taiwan. So my personal conclusion would be that I don't think China will immediately invade just yet, at least not for the next 5 to 10 years. But I'm really not sure if they won't do it in the long run because to be fair, 10 years is a really long time. It's enough of a time for another country to also develop their semiconductor industry to have it advanced enough to compete with Taiwan. And by then, Taiwan would definitely be put in a very, very dangerous situation. And also, as I've already been saying from the beginning, low chance doesn't mean no chance. So there's still always a risk. Last but not least, I want to quickly talk about this observation that I have of people's attitude towards the invasion from both sides. So from what I've seen, Ukrainian people seem to be quite determined to protect the country. So for a lot of them, instead of fleeing, they would actually want to stay and fight for the country. And I don't really see many Taiwanese people doing the same if the same situation happens. I think a lot of Taiwanese people, including myself, we would just want to escape out of the country as soon 
soon as possible. And because a lot of us also don't think that we really stand a chance against China at all, so we also believe that if China announces its, its invasion, we probably should just surrender as soon as possible before it causes more death. So basically to us, Taiwanese people's lives are more important than Taiwan itself, so to speak. And I know that it might make it sound like we're cowards, but that is the reality and honestly, I don't see anything wrong with it. Of course, I don't speak for all Taiwanese people, but of all the Taiwanese people that I've had this conversation with in the past, everybody quite unanimously agree on escaping and surrendering. And also just actually just yesterday, I came across this post of a person asking people if they would be willing to fight for Taiwan if China does invade. And as you can see, the amount of people saying that they would not be willing to is three times more than the people who said they would they would be willing to. So I guess the number really speaks for itself. But that was basically all I wanted to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching. No matter where you are, I hope you're safe. I hope you have a good life. Please like and subscribe for more content about Taiwan. Usually my videos are not this heavy. I normally just do cultural and historical fun facts about Taiwan and reacting to things from a Taiwanese perspective. So anyway, thanks again and I will see you in the next video.